Welcome to Fred and Amy's Math Shack. Hello, we're going to draw a rhombus now. So a rhombus, you might remember, has all sides the same length. Um, it's similar to a square, but inside a square, of course, we have right angles, whereas in a rhombus, we don't. So how are we going to draw this? Okay, you need all this equipment, as you can see here. And I'm going to start off with a baseline. So I'm going to start off with a baseline of 9 centimetres. I've just chosen that just because I know that that will be okay for my compass to stretch to 9 centimetres and because it's visually big enough for you to see on the screen here. Um, you can make it a little bit smaller, I wouldn't go too much smaller, um, or you can make it a little bit bigger, but remember your compass can only stretch so far. So I'm going to do a baseline of 9 centimetres and remember all sides on a rhombus are equal in length. So I need to open out my compass to 9 centimetres. So I'm going to put the sharp point on there at the zero and open it out to 9 centimetres. So now that I've got that, remember try not to get your other hand involved, okay, because it's going to affect the accuracy and we know that that is precisely 9 centimetres and I don't want to affect that accuracy. So from the left hand side you're just going to do one little arc okay so one little arc on your page again you can move the piece of paper if that helps okay rather than your compass you can keep it still and just move the paper like I'm doing here okay and then it helps if you do quite a lot of a circle so instead of just the arc that crosses so from this side I'm just going to do an arc but instead of the arc that crosses, probably just do as much of the circle that would be formed there. So keep going to create probably a semicircle. You can do the whole circle, but as you can see, I'd go off the page here a little bit if I did that. So just do the semicircle. So we've got some crossing arcs here, which is really helpful. So this is all from the left hand, sorry, apologies, the right hand side of my baseline. And then I'm going to go and put my compass in that bit there, okay? And then take it over to see where it crosses here, okay? And you'll see that it crosses that semicircle there. And now we have all four vertices of our rhombus. So I'm going to join up here to here this time. From here to here and from there to there and there you have it your rhombus all sides equal in length all sides nine centimeters okay that's a rhombus what about a parallelogram so a parallelogram quite similar except we've got two sides equal to each other, that one and that one, and that one and that one, okay? And the lines, the, the sides have got to be parallel to each other. So again, I'm going to start off with a baseline. Let's go for 10 centimetres, okay, 10 centimetres. Now, just for quickness and simplicity today, uh, there is obviously a really accurate way of doing this, and especially in, in common entrance questions, you will get um, a given criteria for your parallelogram. But just for quickness and simplicity today, I'm just going to do it in the, the, the uh, quickest and ac most accurate way I can show you um, to keep it quick and simple for you. Now, you know that a parallelogram, let's just do a quick sketch here, looks something like that. So you've got an angle created here with this baseline and this side here. Okay, this is going to create an angle for you here. And it's an acute angle. And let's just say that this is going to be, I'm going to make this 70 degrees. Okay, you can make it pretty much anything you want, but you want it to, to make it look a bit like this sketch here. Okay, um, so you're looking for around about this type of angle, 70 degrees. So I'm going to get my protractor and I'm going to get the center point there. 
I'm going to put it on that point there. So there we go. I've, I've matched up the centre point there. Can you see how you can just about see my baseline behind the protractor here? I haven't, ma haven't matched up, haven't matched up, haven't matched up. Now I've matched it up. Okay. So I'll show you that again. Not matched up, not matched up. Now it's matched up. Okay. That dot there perfectly matches the end point there. And I'm going to measure from zero, okay? So zero on the inside here because I want my side to come up from here. Look, it's coming up from that side. So 70 degrees, one, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. 70 degrees. There is my marker there. And I'm just going to draw a line. I don't really uh, mind what length it is at the moment, but I know that that is 70 degrees. Okay, so I know that that is 70 degrees. And I want the other line to be exactly 70 degrees because I want it to be exactly parallel. So if I move my ruler along, you can see that that line there, I want the other one to be exactly parallel. Okay, so my ruler is still parallel to that line. My ruler is still parallel to that line. So how am I going to create that parallel line on this side? Well, I need to make this angle 70 degrees here, okay? This angle here 70 degrees. So again, I'm going to get my protractor, center point there, put it on the end there. And I want that side to be 70 degrees as well. So again, I'm going to move from here 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. 70 degrees there. And then I can just join up. So actually what the angle I've measured is this angle here, okay? So you might then therefore be able to work out that that would be 110. So you might think, oh, what do those two angles add up to? Those two angles we know what they add up to. Can you see what's happening here? So I know now that that is parallel to that. Okay, and just for simplicity, I'm just going to put the top line there. Okay, um, of course, in exam questions, they might give you particular criteria for the length of this side, but just for simplicity today, I'm just going to keep it as that. Okay, so here is my parallelogram in green. And again, you can keep your construction lines in. Um, that's, you know, common entrance and GCC, you can keep your construction lines in. Um, same with the arcs, the arcs here, you can keep those in, that's no problem, don't rub them out. Okay, and there's your parallelogram. Okay, and the final one I want to show you is a regular hexagon. Now this is a really cool. So regular hexagon. So you need your compass and I'm going to open it out to make uh, we're going to draw a circle actually now now I don't want it to be massive okay and I don't want it to be tiny okay just a medium sized circle so this is going to be the radius of the circle um, and I'm going to draw a circle now the most important thing is that you do not adjust the width of this at any point okay so at no point in the next three minutes am I going to affect the size of this compass I'm going to keep it exactly like this okay so my first step is to draw a circle so again don't put the point up here because then obviously it's going to go off the page okay put it in the center of your of your sheet of paper okay now I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure into here I'm going to put a little bit of pressure onto here but slightly less than at this point so I'm putting a little bit of pressure more pressure here and a little bit less pressure here but just enough to make a pencil line and I'm going to turn my paper okay I'm going to turn my paper because that's the easiest way I think to do it turn your paper go over it a few times so that it makes it nice and clear circle okay do not adjust your compass I haven't touched my compass at all draw my circle now take the sharp point there to the edge, also known as the circumference of your circle. Okay, so I put it on the circumference of my circle and then get your pencil and draw a little arc there. Okay, do you see where I've drawn my arc there? Lift up your compass. I've not, I'm not moving the width of it at all. Move it to here. Little arc here. 
keep going around your circle, put the sharp point into here, lift it, keep going around your circle, lift it, put it into where it crosses, another little arc, lift it up, there, and the final arc there. And you will find that that last one, if I kept going around now, they, they would just repeat. Okay. So now I've got six points. One, two, three, four, five, six. And they form the vertices of my regular hexagon. So now I'm going to join them up. Join those dots. Okay, and there is your regular hexagon. Okay, some people go to the end of the arc and they join those up, but that's not correct. Okay, make sure you're inside the circle and you're joining up where that arc hits the circumference of the circle. So those green dots there. Okay, so once you've got all these shapes, you've got your regular hexagon, you've got your parallelogram, and you've got your rhombus, cut them out. Okay, cut them out and then see where they fold onto themselves, okay? So I'm just going to quickly cut out this regular hexagon and see where they fold onto each other exactly. So here's your regular hexagon. Where can I fold it? Well, I can fold it any old how. I can fold it, I can fold it like that if I wanted, but that's not going to match up your vertices, okay? Where can I fold that so that those vertices completely match? So those two vertices match, and is it the same on the back? Yes, it's the same on the back. So I know now that that is a perfect match. So I'm going to crease that side, open it up, and then make sure you draw in the dotted line. Okay, and can you fold that any other way so that it perfectly matches? Try that with your regular hexagon, with your parallelogram, and with your rhombus.